Hi again then guys and welcome to another specific car review from Gran Turismo 6 and this time we're talking about a luxury sports car, the lower sibling you could say of an exotic Mercedes that we've already talked about and that is the SL500 in particular. We already looked at the SL600 and of course we already considered all of the newer ones, the R230 series with the SL500, 600, 55 and 65. Those cars are very popular, especially the 55, in particular the SL65 is an absolute monster. It's one of the quickest road cars in the game, up around 300 miles per hour. It's great. It's essentially a supercar in a sports convertible outfit, a wolf in sheep's clothing, if you will. Whereas ones like this, the SL500s, the SL600s, they tend to get overlooked. And with the SL600, with that big V12 from back in the 90s, I love that car. And I believe I mentioned in that review, but I'll say it again, this is my favourite SL. I love the design of this shape. It's the R129 series from the 90s. I think it looks fantastic. I don't think the SL has ever looked as good before or since. It's aged so well. It's that boxy, essentially 90 shape, but I think it's actually aged really, really well, and they keep their value pretty well also. Now, as far as this one goes, it's certainly the less obvious choice. If you're going to go for this generation, most people, for obvious reasons, would probably go for the SL600. It's got the big V12, over 600 horsepower of potential. You can get it over 250 miles per hour in Gran Turismo 6. What about this one, though? Because the SL500, both of this one and the newer one, the R230 shape, they don't tend to get as much love, for obvious reasons. Well, what you get is actually a surprisingly capable car, and it's not that far behind the SL600. In terms of power, there's only about 30 horsepower between them. That car, if I recall correctly, has something like 643 horsepower, I think it is fully tuned. This one's got 616. That's not much of a difference, especially given that this car has a 5-litre V8 compared to that car's, what was it, 6-litre, I believe, V12. That's a pretty huge difference, and yet the spec isn't. Now, in terms of torque as well, Mercedes AMG models and Mercedes performance cars in general have a very American approach to their spec. They will typically have a lot more torque than they do power. They're actually very American in that sense, kind of like German muscle cars, and they drive like it. They shred up their tires, they like to get sideways. A perfect example is the Mercedes CL class. That car's got like 600 horsepower in its AMG form, but like 740 pound feet of torque. It's crazy. Now this one isn't quite that insane, but fully tuned, it does have 637 pound feet. That's really good, so for both power and torque, it can actually surpass some supercars when tuned. As far as the weight, well, of course, that's always going to be the disadvantage of these SLs, regardless of generation. They are big, luxury convertibles, so of course they're going to be heavy. They're easily between the 1600 kilo region and the full-on 2 ton region. This one, when dropped, in terms of weight at least, is actually quite reasonable. 1337 kilos is a little bit lighter than, for instance, a GT3 race car in the game, something like the Z4 GT3 or the Nismo GTR GT3 car. That's not bad. Of course it's rear-wheel drive, horsepower per ton is just over 460. The unfortunate thing, and this is the unfortunate thing about Mercedes, Jaguar and Aston Martin in pretty much all Gran Turismo games, is the price. They are so expensive. And of course, that is deliberate. It's designed to parallel the kind of pricing that these exotic cars have in comparison to, say, Japanese rivals or British rivals, or at least some British, like TVR, Lotus. They are very expensive. This car is 168,000 credits. Now, it definitely should not be that high. Is it a luxury car? Yes, of course, but that's ridiculous. This thing should easily be more like 80 or 90,000 at the most, and that, to be honest, does hurt it. Because put simply, you can definitely get better cars for a lower price. But that's the thing. You don't buy an SL500 because you want the best car. Not anymore. You buy it because you like it, or you want to try something different. Likewise with something like a Jag XKR, or an Aston Martin DB9. A Nissan GTR can easily beat all of those. But you might still buy one just because you like it. That's the whole point. 
And for me, that is definitely the case with these SLs. I really prefer, honestly, this SL, especially the 600, but the 500 as well, over an R35. Honestly, I love the Nissan, but I prefer the Mercedes. To me, I love this generation of car. The performance is actually really good. The top speed is still over 240 on this one, which is more than enough for most career mode races. The acceleration is surprisingly good. It doesn't feel as quick as it is though, which could again put some players off. It can have a tendency to be a little bit sluggish. It feels like it's quite talky low end, but not so much top end, which is kind of the case. But overall, it's a deceptively capable car. The handling is not as sharp as many of its rivals, but again, you have to factor in the age. Because if you really get down to brass tacks and compare it to its rivals, there aren't many. There actually are not many rivals for this car in the game. The ones that stand out would be stuff like the Aston Martin DB7, but even that is kind of a little bit newer. The Jag XK is probably the best rival for it, really, so it doesn't really have many direct competitors to go up against. So it kind of feels a little bit in a no-man's land, but I'm glad that they included them. I'm really glad, actually, that they included these because it's an easy car to overlook in terms of a lineup, and I don't think it's the kind of car that's going to come back anytime soon, so at least we have it from, say, Gran Turismo 4 right up until Gran Turismo 6 to still enjoy in those games. And for someone like me who really appreciates these older Mercedes models, be it AMG or otherwise, they do actually give you a lot to work with. The most unfortunate thing is definitely the pricing. But if you can get past that, maybe if you've got the cash to spare, I would actually recommend trying out these. Honestly though, if you are going to go for one or the other, you should definitely get the SL600, because that is just the absolute out and out brute version. This one though is lighter, it's cheaper, and the specs are surprisingly similar. So it depends what you want to try, and obviously the difference between V12 and V8 will appeal to different people. But that's it for this pick, of course. I'll see you guys next time, and for now, as always, Thanks for watching.